Listen, having the right confidence matter. Did you know that there is more than one type of confidence? You have the confidence in the spirit and confidence in the flesh. Go to Philippians 3 and 3. Put me on pause, then come back and read it with me. Here it goes. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. Those that are circumcised. We know what circumcised is. We know what circumcision is. That means to cut away. That means that we've said God created us a clean heart and renew the right spirit. What spirit? God's spirit. What is God's spirit? His word within us. So God said those who have a circumcised heart, which means what? Your mind have been renewed. You are now a new creature. You have the mind of Christ. You have been circumcised. God is pleased with you. He's able to dwell in you. His word is in your heart. You are guarding your heart with diligence. God said those are the ones that are worshiping him in spirit. Why? Because God says he's a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in how? In spirit and in truth. And when you are in that space, that means now you have the right confidence, which is the confidence in the spirit, in God's word, in God's word. God's words also says this. He says, those that walk in the spirit shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. How is this? It's because those with the circumcised hearts who have been renewed with the right spirit, they are now able to see. They're able to see with the confidence of God. In other words, they're able to see with God's discernment. The word of God says this, my word is quick. Quick means living. Living is a spirit. It's God. My word is quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword, able to pierce and divide a son of the soul and the spirit, joint and marrow, able to discern the thoughts and know the intentions of the heart. So those who are worshiping God in spirit, which is his spirit, they are able to see in the spirit. They're not just seeing it on the surface. They're just not seeing what the physical eyes can see or what the physical ears can hear or what the feelings and the emotions are trying to give in the flesh. No. Those who are worshiping God in spirit because their heart is circumcised, they are able to see in the spirit realm. They're able to see afar. They're able to see through the discernment of God. They're able to see that it's worked out for me. They're able to see that God worked it out for me. They're able to see that God changed it around for me. They're able to see that God delivered they were to see that. And therefore, they're able to have confidence. Matter of fact, in prayer today, God said his confidence is our root to our trees. That's what God said. Be like the tree planted by the rivers of water. God said out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. What is this living water? God's word. That's why God says what? Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We could only have life through God. Only have life. That's why in the word it says what? Present our body as a what? Living sacrifice. How can we present our body as being living? It's not talking about when you wake up in the morning, oh, I'm alive. No. By God's spirit, present your body in God's spirit. That's what God said. Anyone that wants to come into my presence, into my secret place, they have got to have a purged heart, cleansed hands. Right? Vanity and deceitfulness removed. God said, all that got to be removed. You got Your heart got to be right. So if you're going to present your body as a living sacrifice, that means what? God's word is what causes you to be a living sacrifice. That's the only way it could be holy and acceptable. God's word is what makes us clean. It is through his righteousness. God said, I owe righteousness to him. We are still as what? Filthy rags. So 
it is his word, his spirit, which is living, that causes us to be presented, our bodies presented as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, right? So God is saying in order for us to be able to have confidence, the right confidence, it has to start with our heart, with our thinking, having the right mindset, having the mind of Christ. That's why I love it in there where it says, worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus. We got to have the mind of Christ. If we don't have the mind of Christ, then how can we rejoice in Christ Jesus? Because we will not be able to understand the redemption in what he was able to bring to us. We're not, we would not be able to understand his walk and therefore not be able to walk it out. Right? We got to be able to walk in the spirit. In order to walk in the spirit, we got to be able to rejoice in Christ Jesus. And to worship God in the spirit. The heart has to be changed. A lot of times we like to try to get God's benefits, but don't want to change our ways. We want to stay in our own ways, but we know that God says where the ways of man seemeth right unto him. But in the end of it all is death. It's, just, it's destruction. You can't say, Hey God, give me your benefits, but let me keep doing my own thing. No, it don't work like that. And if you try to work it like that, if you did get a little, a glimpse, a little taste of victory, it'll be so short lived. It'll be with sorrow. It will not be anything everlasting, anything permanent. Why? Because it's not in the spirit. God said his word, his spirit is everlasting. So if you're not doing it in the spirit of God, it's not going to be everlasting. God said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall remain. So we have to be postured in God's word, circumcised in the heart, in the mind. That's what God said. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Our heart is right. Remember the word of God says this, that he goes to and fro throughout the world and showing up on the behalf of those whose heart is postured, whose mindset is in the mind of Christ, who has a repentant state of mind. God shows up for those individuals. His word come through for those. That's why God said, so shall my word be. But we're trying to make God's word be when we ain't right. The spirit has to be right. Remember, remember the sons of Sceva? We're trying, was trying to use the word of God, trying to get the benefits of God's word, but they weren't right. That's why God said, the branch that is in the vine shall bring forth fruit. You got to be in the spirit to get the benefits. Now, don't get me wrong. God does give us grace. His grace is sufficient for all of us. Because let me tell y'all something. Ain't none of us deserving of what God has given to us. Ain't none of us deserving of it. So God does bless us. He does still watch out for us. But when we get into the nitty gritty, wanting the word of God to work for us, and we, in, and we are in an unclean place, we should not be looking to receive when we are in an unclean place. When we are refusing to say, you know what, I'm a... God created me a clean heart. Because God says what? He said our bodies is his temple. And we should have no other idols in there. No other gods in there. So a lot of times we like to hold on to little gods, little idols, little car carnality, fleshly things in our hearts. And say God still give me the benefit. And God don't want you to be lukewarm. Because that's what you're creating. You're saying God I want some of your hot but let me keep some of my cold. God said, if you are lukewarm, he goes, that was not tasty. He going to spit you out, spew you out. And that's what you're doing when you're saying, God, give me your benefits. Give me this and let me hold on to this. You're making warm stuff. God don't want that lukewarm. He don't want that. You either hot or you either cold. Hot or cold, which one? If you're going to be hot, then that means you're going to be in the confidence of God, in his word. If you're going to be cold, that means you're looking to be in the confidence of the flesh. Because those who have confidence in the flesh, those are the ones who, are, who does not have a circumcised heart. 
They are not worshiping God in the spirit. They are not rejoicing in Christ Jesus. Instead, they are in their own ways. They're saying, no, my education going to get me there. No, my own thinking going to get me there. No, my own interpretation, my own understanding is going to get me there. No, I trust my brother over there because he went to school. I trust him. But God said what? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways to acknowledge him and he going to direct your path, right? That's why he said, I'll teach you and instruct you in the way in which you should go. And I'll guide you with my eye. God's eye is his spirit. God said he sees all things. Ain't nothing hidden from God. God said everything is naked. It's open and naked unto him. God even said that darkness is still as of light to him. Can't nothing hide from God. God sees everything. So imagine if you're not circumcised in the heart, in the mind. And you're, you're, you have not been circumcised and, and you have not been in a space where you are worshiping God in the spirit. That means when you're in darkness, you're walking in blindness. That's You're going to experience some things that's going to cause you to be frustrated, cause you to feel defeated, cause for you to be defeated, cause for you to live a life that God never called for you to live. In other words, when you will be uh, fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Because God said those that walk in the spirit, they won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Which means what? If you're walking in the flesh, in carnality, you're going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. And when you fulfill the lust of the flesh, that means what? You are not walking out the will of God. Which means what? You will be in a state of poverty. Where the poverty mentally, spiritually, Physically, financially, it's going to be some lack, some slack. It, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. It, that's what, that's exactly what it's going to be. So the day in prayer, I heard God say, it matters of what type of confidence we have. God said it is only through his word that gives us roots to our trees. That's, that's what he said to me in prayer. And it blew my mind. I said, oh my God. Because God said, be like the tree planted by the rivers of living water. God said, out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's his word. That's what God tells us to guard our heart. It's circumcised. Our mind is circumcised. So God said, guard it with all diligence. Why? Because out of it floweth what? The issues of life. What is the issues of life? His word. That's why God said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of his mouth. God's word is what gives us life. That's why Jesus said what? I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I'm the word. Take me in. Bound around your neck. Don't let it depart from your eyes. Guard your heart. Put me in your heart and guard it. Keep it in there. Why? Because when you have the word of God, now you have the right confidence. You're confident in the right one, in God. And God said it is through his confidence, which is his word, that he will see that our feet will not be taken. He will see that we win. He will see that we be victorious. He will see it. He will see that his word shall be. That's why God says, so shall my word be. That any word that he speaks that comes out of his mouth, it's going to give life. It's going to give growth. It's going to give increase. It can't help but to perform. Because God said, any word that he, he speaks, it will accomplish everything that he's sending out to accomplish. That's why God said, I'm not a man that I should lie, neither am I the son of man that I should repent. If I said it, I'm going to do it. If I spoke it, I'm going to make good on it. God's word is not going to return back void. That's why there's no disappointment when you're walking in the will of God. When you're in the spirit. There's no disappointment because God says what? He that have promised God's word, every word that God speak is a promise. God said he is faithful to it. God is faithful to every promise, to every word that he speaks. And when you are in the confidence, in the spirit, then there will be no disappointment. You will see the will of God exposed in your life. You will walk out God's peaceful thoughts concerning you. You will walk out God's plan concerning you. And God said his plan is to prosper us and to give us what? And expect expect the end. A future and a hope. 
But if you're not walking in the spirit, if you don't have confidence in the spirit, that means you will fulfill the lust of the flesh and not fulfill the will of God. And you'll be over there scratching your head, rubbing your head, biting your nails, pacing back and forth. Because you're saying, I don't know what's going on. I still feel a little bored, a little empty. I feel a little drought over here. I got my dream car. I got my dream house. I got my dream job. I got the wife I wanted. I got the husband I wanted. But something ain't right. Something is off. Something is off. So there you are, going back and forth, pacing back and forth. And you know when you're in that state, God ain't hearing a word you got to say. Why? Because you're double-minded. You're double-minded now. That's what God said. Any man that's double-minded, who's wavering, that person's like a, a, a ship being tossed to and fro in the sea. God said, let, that not, let not that individual think that they will receive anything from me. See, when your confidence in the flesh, you, you double-minded. If you have confidence in the carnality, in the flesh, you are double-minded. You are. And therefore, every time you try to talk to God and then do this and that, 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 God is like, I, I see the mouth moving, but I don't hear nothing. Why? Because he don't hear none of his words speaking. And that's why I told y'all, you cannot fight the enemy with your own words. You cannot address God with your own words. God wants to hear his reflection in you, in other words. He wants to hear you speak his word. But when you speak God's word, you got to be postured in the in the spirit, in the spirit. That's what God said. We are the circumcision, Philippians 3 and 3. We worship God in spirit. So when you speak to God from the circumcised place in the spirit, now word to word, now reflection to reflection. Now it's like God is looking in the mirror at himself. He said, I see me. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking, to, talking confidence to myself. I am a good God. Yes, I am. Uh, through me, I, all things are possible. That's right. When you talk the word of God from, a spirit, from, the, from his spirit, it's God saying, I'm the junk. I'm, I'm, yeah, you got that right. That's me. And God, go ahead and do that thing. But if you try to talk God's word from a place that is not from the spirit, then guess what? You're going to be like the sons of Sceva. You're going to be over there trying to make something happen. And God's like, I, I know I know, I know, you you saying what I say, but you ain't coming from the right place. Your heart ain't in the right place. And that's how we are sometimes. We approach God and our heart is in the wrong place. It's not even in the right place at all. But we're still trying to quote God's word from an unclean place in the heart. In other words, in the mind. We want God to give us the benefits, but our mindset hand changed. And God is saying, in order for you to have the right confidence, the only way, the heart got to be circumcised. You got to have a create in me, God, a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. The heart has got to be changed. It got to be changed. And when that heart is postured, you won't even be trying to figure it out on your own. You'll be like, this ain't got nothing to do with me, God. <laughs> God, your word said you'll be approaching God in the spirit, worshiping him in the spirit and in truth. And therefore, what will happen? You'll be talking to God according to his will. And that's why the word of God, I told y'all before, God says what? Um, um, uh, um, the word of God says um, that when you ask, this is the confidence, I'm sorry, y'all. This is the confidence that I have in him, in God. That when I ask or petition according to God's will, that what? He hears me. God hears you when you're petitioning according to his will. But the only way you can petition according to God's will is to already be what? Posture here. That's what God said. When you delight yourself in him, he will give you the desires of your heart. Because now you're aligned with God. It's all about alignment. It's all about alignment. All about alignment, y'all. 
having the right heart. Because if your heart's not postured, you're going to have confidence in the flesh. And confidence in the flesh is going to let you down every single time. There will be drought every single time. Disappointment, heartache, heartbreak. I'm telling you something I know. And when you say, God, you know what? I'm going to get in alignment with you. I'm going to worship you in spirit and in truth. I'm not coming concerning me. I'm just coming concerning you. God, what do you want? Your will be done in me. Your will be done. That's what God says. Wait, it is me that work in you. That's what God said. I'm the one that's working in you. I think it's Philippians 2 and 14, if I'm not mistaken. 2 and 13 or 2 and 14. God said, it is I that works in you to will and do for your good, for his good pleasure. God is the one that's working in us. His spirit that works in us to will and do for his good pleasure. So when you get in alignment and say, okay, God, your will be done. Your work be done. You, you come in and do what you want to do because the earth is yours and the fullness are of the world and they that dwell in. So why not you do what you want to do? That's why I tell God. I said, God, all this belongs to you. So, Lord, whatever you want, God, whatever type of day you want to have today, let your will be done. And when you posture God, when you come to God in, in, in that type of posture, God knows that you ain't coming for you. You're not coming to just get, get, give me, give me, give me. It's a seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. You're seeking God for his righteousness, which means where there's a continuance of a hunger going on. The number one way to lose hunger for God is to put your needs first. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Did y'all hear me? The quickest way to lose hunger for God's righteousness is to put your needs first. God said he already know what you want. He already know what you need before you know what you need. He said, don't think about what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat. He said, don't think about all that stuff. He got that covered. But if you think about it, then you're no longer hungry. You're no longer hungry for God's righteousness. Because you're too busy thinking about this carnality state. And God said, we're in this world and not of it. And when you're so busy in the carnality state, that means your confidence is in what? The flesh. And God said, he does not want you having confidence in flesh. Because flesh is not everlasting. Flesh cannot sustain you. Only God's word can. So God said, have the confidence, confidence in the right thing, and that is his spirit. Have the confidence in the right thing, and that is his spirit. And God's spirit will lead you exactly where you're supposed to be. And therefore what? God's will for your life will be fulfilled. And his will, like I told you, is his plan for you. And that is to prosper you and to give you an expected end. I hope y'all got this. I know it was long. I had to get it out. But if you didn't get this thing, rewind it. Watch it again. Watch it in small snippets. Because y'all know I could run my mouth. Well, watch it again, okay? In the meantime, in between time, if you take just a little bit of what I'm telling you and apply it to your life, don't be just a hearer, be a doer. Apply it to your life to the best of your ability with the guidance of God. You won't ever, 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 ever have to mask a smile. Why? Because your smiles will always be genuine. Y'all be blessed, stay blessed, be blessed, stay blessed, be blessed, stay blessed. God love y'all so much. So enter into the right confidence, which is the confidence in his spirit. And watch how God will increase you like never before. I'm going to go because I feel myself about to talk again. I'm already at 25, right at 25 minutes. I'll talk to y'all soon. I love y'all. And thank you all for all of you guys who have subscribed to the channel. That blesses my heart to let me know that God's word is really going forth. And he is blessing those who are watching. I'm so happy. Thank you so much. Share it with a friend. Share it with a neighbor. Share it with a hater. Share it. Get God's word out because God said the entrance. Oh, I got to go. I got to go. But I heard it, God. God said the entrance of his word bringeth light. It giveth light. Y'all saw how that light just came in. The entrance of God's word giveth light. 
and giveth understanding to the simple. So listen, the more you share, the more you share this video, you're glorifying God. We're uplifting God. And God said, if he be lifted up, that he will draw all men unto him. So share if you can, okay? Share if you can. All right, I'll talk to y'all soon. Again, be blessed, stay blessed, be blessed, stay blessed. Stay in the right confidence, and that's the confidence in the spirit. Walk in the spirit so that you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, but instead you shall fulfill the will of God, the plans of God for your life, and that is to prosper you and to give you and expect the end. All right, I'm gone for real now. Y'all be blessed. Love y'all, and God love y'all too.